Hey there, and welcome back. Now you think about the Trijicon ACOG, and more than likely you probably either love it or you hate it. But the fact is, this optic has been around for a long time, and it's proven itself across the globe as a very effective combat optic. Now if you saw my combat optics review that I put out about a month ago, you notice that I didn't choose this as my favorite optic for a fighting rifle, say for zero to 300-ish yards. Reason being is up close, the fixed four power and the bend and aiming concept just isn't that fast and isn't that easy to use for me. But that said, I do believe the ACOG is a great optic on something like this rifle, a 14 and a half inch kind of general purpose rifle that you're looking to shoot out to intermediate distances frequently. I feel like the ACOG is a very effective optic for quickly and accurately ranging your target and then putting rounds on that target. Now, what I hope to do in this video is give you a look at how the optic performs on what I would call a general purpose type carbine. I want to use this four power TA 31 FG ACOG and put rounds on steel from 300 out to 800 meters as well as show you what the rifle and the ACOG are capable of at 100 meters. I think this is really the sweet spot for this optic and I think it's going to show really well as we push out to distance on steel. So in this video, what you're gonna see is a 100 yard group, and then I'm gonna move over to steel at 300 meters, 400, 500, all the way out to 800 meters, or until we can no longer make consistent hits. So if you like the sounds of that, stick around. Let's move into a gear review, and then we'll move into the shooting. So before we start shooting, let's take a close up look at the gear we're gonna run in the video. For a rifle, I've got my Knight's SR15 SBR lower with a Knight's two-stage trigger in it. Then the upper is my Sop Mod Block 2 clone upper. So this started out life as a Colt 6920, but I swapped the barrel out for a 14 and a half inch Colt SOCOM weight barrel. So it's a little bit heavier under the handguard. And in my experience, is a pretty great shooter. It's a one in seven twist barrel. And if you saw my AR0 video from a couple of weeks back, this is the exact same upper that we ran for that video. Now to remove shooter error, we'll shoot prone off of the AccuTac bipod and using a rear bag at each distance. Now the optic we're gonna run is a Trijicon ACOG TA31FG. So that's a fixed four power ACOG with a green chevron reticle and then a BDC down below that goes out to 800 meters. Prior to filming this, I confirmed with Trijicon that BDC is calibrated in meters for M855 ball ammunition out of a 20 inch barrel. Now because I'm shooting a 14 and a half inch barrel, I don't have as much velocity. So as we push out to distance, I'm gonna have more real drop out of the bullet than the BDC calls for, meaning I'm gonna have to favor high, likely at the further distances. Now it's pretty cool, on the Trijicon website, they actually publish the dimensions of the BDC for each of their ACOGs in MOA. So you can compare your real drop out of a ballistics calculator to what the BDC is calibrated for to get an idea of how different your actual hold will be versus what the BDC calls for. I've actually done that, and from what I can tell, I should be able to hold basically center with the BDC out to about 500 meters, and then beyond 500 meters at 6, 7, and 800, I'm expecting to have to favor high because my bullet is dropping more than the BDC is calibrated for. So what are we gonna shoot for ammo? I've got Hornady Black, 5.56 NATO, 62 grain FMJ ball. Because we're in a dry wheat field, I don't wanna run M855 out here and risk potential sparking. So this should fly pretty similar. It's 5.56 NATO pressure, so we're gonna get plenty of velocity, and I think it'll match up pretty well. Now, before I move down to 100 yards, let me know in the comments, What's your thoughts about the ACOG? How far have you pushed an ACOG? How far do you expect me to be able to effectively push an ACOG? I'm really excited about this one because I think this ACOG on a 14 and a half inch AR is a perfect match for a fighting rifle where you're looking for intermediate capability or intermediate distance capability. So from here, let's move down to 100 yards. I can't wait to see how the 62 grain ammo shoots out of this rifle, especially if you compare it back to the three MOA performance we saw with the 55 grain ammo in the zeroing video. I'm thinking this is gonna be a solid performer and then we'll push it out to distance. So let's get after it. So here we are back at 100 meters. Let's go ahead and put five rounds on paper, give you an idea of how this Hornady Black 
62 grain FMJ groups on paper, as well as confirm my zero. Five rounds, 100 meters. I'm gonna put the tip of the chevron right in the middle of that one inch black dot. Let's go take a look at how we did. So here's a close up look at our 100 meter target. There's a couple things I wanna talk through here. If you remember back to my AR Combat Zero video where I shot 55 grain ammunition out of that exact same rifle, that was about a three MOA performance. Well, you can see just by swapping to the 62 grain ammunition, it really improves the performance of that rifle. So now I've got a five shot group right at an inch and a half or 1.5 MOA, which is exceptional for combat accuracy. So great improvement in accuracy just by swapping the bullet. From there, I wanna talk about my zero. So you think about that ACOG, I had my chevron pointed dead center of the circle. So in theory, I would wanna bring my impacts down to meet that. However, I'm not gonna make that change because I'm shooting a 14 and a half inch barrel and the BDC is calibrated for a 20 inch barrel. Therefore, I don't have as much velocity on my bullets. So as the bullet flies, it's gonna be dropping more out at distance than the BDC is calibrated for. So rather than having to cheat out at distance, I'm going to push my point of impact up roughly one minute or one inch that you can see there. And that way, as I push out to distance, my BDC is more accurately going to track shooting these bullets out of my 14 and a half inch barrel, even though the BDC is calibrated for a 20 inch barrel. So a little bit of a cheat here. We won't notice it at the shorter ranges, but I think it'll really make it easier to connect at the longer distances. So we move back to 300 meters. I've got a two third diptych down there and I've got five rounds loaded up. Let's see how easily we can connect on a reduced size IPSC at this distance. So for 300 meters, I'm going to use the post that sticks up in the middle of the chevron. And there's absolutely no wind out here, so I'm gonna hold dead on. So here we go. Impact. There's a left edge. Impact. 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 Very easy on a reduced size torso. Let's take a close up look. So here we are at 400 meters. I've swapped to a full size IPSC, which is 18 inches wide, and matches up with the width of the range finding stadia within this ACOG BDC. It's pretty cool. It's basically spot on, which is what you would expect. So for 400 meters, elevation wise, I'm going to hold dead center. Windage wise, I'm going to probably favor just a bit to the right, but not off the plate. I see that wind flag is pushing a bit left. So let's go ahead and put five rounds down there using the 400 meter hash mark. Impact. First round. Pretty cool. Do it again. Impact. 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 Those last couple of rounds, I was just dead on center of the target. I pulled back on the windage hold. So let's go take a close up look and see where the rounds landed versus the BDC. So we're back at 500 meters now. I've got 10 rounds loaded up with the full size IPSC down there. Once again, the ranging stadia is a perfect match for my 18 inch target. So that is super cool. There's quite a bit of right to left windage out there now. I had to change shooting position so I'm up on top of the hill now. So for elevation, I'm gonna hold center and then I'm gonna favor right, basically a half plate width. Let's see if we can connect with any of these 10 rounds. The Tacticam is set to 10 power or 12 power. So here we go. Favor half plate right, elevation, middle hold. Impact, first round. Impact.
impact. Impact. Impact. Impact. Impact. Impact. Impact. 10 for 10 at 500 meters. It seemed like that half plate right. Windage hold was spot on. The wind was very consistent. So I'll get you a close up picture and we'll push back to 600 meters. All right, so that range is about 605. I've got 10 rounds loaded up. Let's see if we can connect. Now, once again, the width of my Stadia in the ACOG for 600 meters is just about spot on for the width of my 18 inch target. Now you noticed at 500, my impacts were dropping a bit low. So at 600, I'm gonna favor up at the shoulder and I'm gonna favor a half plate to the right for this first round. Actually, right edge for the first round. Shoulder elevation. Impact. Off the left edge. So I need a little bit more wind. I'm going to go to the head with the elevation and more wind. So a half plate. Off the right edge. Elevation looked good. Impact. 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 Off the left edge, a little more wind. Impact. So we had a couple of misses, but I was still barely able to see them and make corrections. Let's get you a close up look at what the target looked like. But from what I could tell, holding the 600 meter line in the head allowed me to connect on that plate pretty easily. From here, let's try to push back to 700 meters. All right, so I'm getting that right at 703 meters, which is what I was trying to do. Let's see how our width stadia lines up on that 18 inch plate. And it looks like that 700 meter hash is perfect as it should be. But man, that is a small target with not a lot of zoom. So I got 10 rounds loaded up. We were starting to see my impacts push low on the plate. So I'm going to put the 700 hash just above the head and I'm going to favor right edge of the plate. Impact first round. Impact. 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 So I am just over the head, maybe six inches most over the head. No call. Impact. 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 
impact. Impact. That was a lot of impacts at 700 meters with an ACOG and 62 grain full metal jacket, but we've got perfect conditions out here tonight. Let me get you a close up look at the target and let's push out and see if we can connect at 800 meters. This is a lot of fun. All right, I'm getting a consistent 795 meters out there on the full size Ipsic. Let me take a look at my ranging stadia. Man, that's a small target. Once again, my 800 meter hash is lining up very well on the plate. It's a beautiful evening right now. The wind has pretty much died down, but you notice my impacts are dropping below the BDC. So for 800 meters, I'm going to favor a plate above the head and a right edge. Let's see if we can make any impacts. So a plate above the head, favoring right edge. All right, that dropped just off the left edge. So elevation looked good, favor a bit more to the right. Drop low. No call. So I'm about a plate and a half high and about a half plate right. No call. No call on those guys. That's tough. That was an impact. All right. Dropped low. I saw that one. Man, that's tough. You just can't see anything. And that was an impact. So. There was at least two impacts that I saw, but really difficult because I couldn't see my misses. And I was holding above the target in space, so it was hard to reference that the BDC wasn't actually on the target. But as you can see, 800 meters, it is possible to make some impacts under really solid conditions. So from here, let's wrap it up, and I'll give you my thoughts of how the ACOG works out to distance. So how cool was that? 800 meters with a 14 and a half inch 5.56 AR shooting 62 grain ball ammunition topped with a four power ACOG. You gotta let me know in the comments, how did the performance of this package stack up versus what you expected at the beginning of this video? Now while you're doing that, I'll run through my thoughts and experiences shooting this package out to distance. So first up was our 100 meter group. We laid down an inch and a half, five round group on paper at 100 meters. In my mind, this ACOG and the Chevron provided a really nice aiming point. I was able to shoot an inch and a half group, which is great for a combat type rifle. That's awesome accuracy. And if you think back to when I shot the AR-0 video with the 55 grain ball ammunition, that was only able to achieve about a three MOA group. So just bumping up to the 62 grain ammunition, cut my group size roughly in half. And as you saw in the video, allowed me to really push the distance with no problems. From that 100 meters, we then pushed out to steel. We shot a two-thirds Ipsic at 300 meters, no problem. The BDC was pretty much perfectly aligned. Then we moved out to a full-size Ipsic at 400 meters. And once again, we had no problem connecting with those five rounds. And again, the BDC was very much correct. From 400 meters, we pushed out to 500 meters where we shot an awesome 10 round group. I think that 10 round group was probably right at 1.5 MOA. And again, no misses, all 10 connected on the full size Ipsic. But we did start to see my impacts dropping just a little bit below what the BDC was calling for. So that's where 
the BDC calibration and my barrel length started to vary a little bit. From there, we pushed out to 600 meters where we connected seven out of 10 times. So pretty awesome performance, 600 meters. We moved out to 700 and we connected nine out of 10 times. So awesome performance, 700 meters on a full size ziptic. That's a lot of distance for a 62 grain 5.56 five, round. Then we pushed out to 800 meters and you saw we had a little bit of trouble. I only connected two times and I really had a hard time spotting my impacts and making corrections. So in my mind, the 800 meter performance, yes, we had a couple of impacts, but I went back and looked at my ballistics calculator and realized my bullet was actually transitioning into that subsonic speed there. So likely was losing stability. And that likely explains why it was really hard for me to connect. So in summary, this ACOG is a very effective option on a rifle like this. It allows you to get up close and shoot decently quick, but for those intermediate distances, the ranging stadia matching up with an 18 inch wide target, it did that perfectly. So if it was unknown distance, I could range and then use my BDC to put those rounds on that target very quickly. The four power allowed me to see the target very well. It allowed me to spot impacts pretty decently out to six, 700 meters, so long as there was a decent splash or the indicator light. So really like the glass in this beautiful field of view. This ACOG is a great option for someone looking to shoot maybe 100 to six or 700 meters. So it's not the best up close. We need to pair it with a red dot for that. But for intermediate shooting, I love how simple it is and fast it is to range and shoot. It's a great package. It's light. It's really handy. I'm a huge fan of the ACOG on this type rifle. So if you like this kind of content, I hope you'll join me in future videos. I hope you'll help me grow my channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing on this video. And I'd love you to hit me up on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. That's a great place for us to interact through the direct messages. I've had a lot of great conversations with many of you about various shooting topics, and I really enjoy that interaction. So that said, if you've made it this far, I thank you for sticking around. I hope you'll join me in my next video, and thanks for watching.